What's going on guys? Ooh, goose is up in the air. You know what that means. We're probably doing some upgrade work today on this monster, my uh, <laughs> EFI Turbo Super Duper build. That's Envy, if you haven't met her yet already, guys. Lots of awesomeness video-wise, if you want to check that out up in the corner over here on that whole build. But today we are going to go ahead and replace my existing remote oil filter setup. This one right here. Yeah, that's a Peterson uh, pressure bypass. It helped me get my oil pressure kind of like under control because this also has an Autocraft uh, stage and a half oil pump on here. And we are going to be upgrading today to the improved racing setup. Yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy. This has the built-in thermostat that opens up all the way at 180 degrees. We're going to talk a little bit more about that whole thing here in a second, guys. Right at the intro, get into some good content. I'll see you guys in one, uh, well, one, two, three, four, like about 20 seconds. <laughs> Oh, baby. Yeah, you guys can go ahead and soak up the sexy for a second. So yeah, I already got Envy up in the air, as you saw in the intro, kind of like video there. We've got an upgrade going on on the back bench here. We're gonna be changing out the existing remote oil filter mount that doesn't have a thermostat built into it to one from Improved Racing that does. Guys, you are joining me now underneath the uh, rear driver's fender where I have the existing oil filter mount. You'll also see that I have a Peterson oil pressure bypass that allows me to regulate the oil pressure because the autocraft oil pump in this monster yeah she puts out some serious pressure and this helps me regulate that some oil pumps out there some of those stage and a half two uh two stage oil pumps they uh they actually have a regulator built into them but this one does not so we're gonna go ahead and pull this unit out of here and i've got to do some relocating when it comes to the sensors that i currently have you can see up here. Let me see. Ooh, I don't know if I can get that up in there. Da, da, da. I'm going to have to take this off of there so you guys can see what's going on. Maybe I'll bring it up higher. Yeah, there you go. On the top here, we've got uh, a T that goes to the oil pressure sensor that uh, provides feedback to the Haltech. And then I actually have an oil pressure sensor here and then a temperature sensor on the back side over here. So there's three sensors hooked up to this oil filter mount. Plus there's also the the feed. Where is the feed at? The feed on the bottom side here, that's right. The feed for the turbo is on the bottom side here. And I'll probably have to relocate that to the other side of this, uh, other side of the mount. I'm gonna figure out that whole configuration once I get it taken apart and order the bench. There's gonna be some line reconfiguration too because pressure is coming into the filter then shoots out to the back side to the uh, to the oil cooler, oil cooler back there, then comes back to the engine. I've got to do some plumbing. I've got some new uh, fire hose or fire jacket, keeps it from getting too hot. This is uh, the wrong size that I have on here. We're going to cut all this loose. We're going to put new fire sleeve. That's what it is, fire sleeve. We're going to put some new fire sleeve on as well as part of this. So let's get up to the bench and I'll show you the the new setup we're gonna be using from Improved Racing. Guys, we're up at the bench now, and this is the unit right here from Improved Racing. Improved Racing. They have all kinds of awesome stuff for your uh, your applications, whether that's oil, they have a bunch of different cooling options as well. If you've got an LS type engine, they've got stuff for you there too. I went ahead and put these 90s on here already. I don't know if they're gonna stay on here. This portion of the unit is separate. This is actually an add-on so that you can do the sensors. Like, I, you know, I got a couple sensors I got to relocate. So I'm going to relocate those sensors to here. And then I've got a couple of different uh, Dash 8AN uh, fittings that let me put sensors in line with the unit. Let me show you that real quick. Yeah, during this whole build, I've acquired a few extra, you know, things here and there just because, oh, that's how it goes when you're building something. This is uh, the different type of thermostat that's out there. This one also kind of works the same way, except it keeps from what it looks like anyway. I'm not positive. Hit me up in the comments if you know for certain. It keeps the uh, thermostat closed while it's rerouting the oil, which is something that this unit does not do. This unit actually allows oil to get by 
so that you're always having oil circulating through the oil cooler system so that you don't get air or cavitation in your system, which you don't want, because that can cause all kinds of issues when it comes to your oil pump. Let's look at the diagram real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, Jay. Yeah, you got it, guys. So oil comes in from the pump, goes through the oil filter, then kind of like bypasses back to the cooler, and then comes through to this side to your back to the engine, and it restricts oil flow until you reach that 180 degrees. You're still getting oil flow through, always getting through the filter, but it just restricts that flow when it's coming back from the oil cooler. So once you hit 180, this opens up, that plunger opens up the rest of the way, and then you're getting the full flow that you want. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do is if we look at the setup here, this would be like to the engine, is I'm gonna have to put my Peterson uh, pressure bypass right here before it enters the oil filter. So that way it's bleeding off any extra pressure before it hits the system here. And then uh, we'll go ahead and see how we're gonna hook up the rest of the stuff. Some messing around to do, kind of figure out the configuration. But uh, yeah, let me show you that, that adapter. It looks like one of these. You just put one of these in line right here and it allows you to put like a sensor or also like the feed for your turbo up off of there so that you can uh, add a sensor that way too. All right, I got some work to do guys. I'm gonna pull off the old unit and then I'll bring it back over here once I got both of them next to each other and we can kind of figure out how the configuration is gonna be. See you in a second. Well guys, we have got a uh, downright mess <laughs> created over here as uh, it normally happens, but I've got the new remote oil filter mount mounted to the CV Performance kind of like a uh, bracket that you guys can pick up. That's like 20 bucks from CB Performance, but I've got the sensors off to the back side the way I want it, so I had to notch out this a little bit to get that to fit right. Let me show you from this side. See all the sensors. So yeah, there you go. Oil pressure sensor to the hall tick, oil pressure sensor to the idiot light for the, you know, just regular VW one. And then on this other side is the uh, oil temperature sensor that goes to my video gauge, or is it VSP? Yeah, VSP gauge and the uh, dash cluster. There is one piece that I do not have for my puzzle, and that, uh, this little piece right here that goes to a 10AN, I need a 10ORB, and I don't have that, so I need to get a 10ORB to 10AN, so I can go ahead and mount the Peterson oil relief valve on this side. And then we will be good to go to put it back in the car, but I'm going to have to order some parts and then get back to work. It should be pretty quick. Like, this is it right here. Whoa. -ho -ho. 10 AN ORB to 10 AN ORB on a swivel so that I can put that right on here and connect it to the Peterson oil relief valve that helps me regulate that pressure. Oil pressure coming out of the air motive, not air motive, man, auto craft oil pump that's on my baby over here, the monster. So I'm gonna do a little time lapse action. I gotta take this 90 off of here and remove this off of there so I can go ahead and just twist it into position. That's just the way it has to happen, baby. And then, uh, yeah, you guys can watch that. And then you'll join me after that time lapse underneath the fender. I'll go ahead and put this back into position and we can start uh, replumbing some lines. Oh yeah, baby.
Well, here you go, guys. Good look with all the light before I put it up underneath the fender. What's really cool about the swivels, though, too, is like it all moves nice and freely. So, like, if I need a little extra room and I had to tilt it this way a little bit, that's not going to be a, a big, a uh, big deal. I don't think I'm going to have any clearance issues when I stick this up underneath the fender, but uh, the swivels are nice. If you guys are curious as to what this line is here, I'm sure you can tell just by where it is grounded at or located at. This is a ground, sensor ground. Aluminum does not uh, provide a ground whenever it's connected to stainless steel or connected to anything. Aluminum doesn't ground. So you have to provide a, an external ground or an additional ground for your sensors. And this ground goes to here. That T is stainless, so it's stainless. It uh, grounds all of that right there. This sensor over here, has its own ground, so I don't need to provide a external ground, but this TEB sensor here, and then the, uh, let's see, pressure sensor on this other side also doesn't need it, so good to go. Bueno, no problem, cool. Well guys, I've got it all back together, and I would like to say it was an easy thing to do, but it is dark, <laughs> so it was not easy. <laughs> Let's uh, grab a light and take a look at what's going on. Yeah. We got to do the uh, startup and check for leaks still, but uh, got all the new fire sleeve installed too. I think it looks way better. Hey, I know, right? It's like mad scientists, like stuff going on back here. <laughs> all these oil lines. They're not all oil lines. I got a couple boost lines down here for the boost solenoid. But uh, yeah, for the most part, these are all oil lines. Let me crank this light up a little bit and then we'll do a little look around and then a, a cold start. And try not to like fume myself out to death up in the garage. Woo, sorry about the bounciness. Up in the garage, guys, because, yeah. Give me that backed up optical super zoom. There it is. Now, isn't that a lot of stuff? So let's just talk about it for a second. Some of the stuff I ran into. I tried to put the sensors off to the back side, so I wouldn't have to look at them. And just, you know, that didn't work. So I had to rotate the sensor block that's on here, the additional sensor block. Zoom in a little bit. The sensor block right here, I had to rotate it this way. Relocate a couple of the sensors. Well, this this one. I had to, had to flip the T. Put the larger sensor on the outside. Because the plan didn't work the way I wanted it to. Of course. I had to drill. Drill the... Uh, well, yeah. You can see also. Let's talk about that first. The Peterson oil relief. I had to turn that thing upside down. Because it was hitting the fender. Yeah, buddy. It's, it's hidden in there amongst the uh, spaghetti that's going on. I had to turn that upside down so it wouldn't hit. I had to re-drill a couple holes to move the mount down in a little bit. I'm not worried about anything getting even remotely close to the tire. And I'll put that on here a little bit, guys, so you can see that that is not a concern. There's plenty of room here as there was before. All we have is... Uh, the line split now so that they go through the thermostat portion of the new filter mount everything as always is tied up underneath the new fire sleeve is super nice i like it a lot it's a lot tighter look cleaner look i use the safety wire to hold things in place and once she's on the ground guys it's uh i am i've never been concerned i got plenty of ground clearance when it comes to these oil lines and uh, yeah, I don't do any off-roading, so unless there's a tree in the middle of the road that I happen to not be able to avoid, I'm not too concerned about anything catching the oil lines. I'm sure that someone out there will say something about that. So it looks good. Let's go ahead and do a fire up and then I'll, we'll check her for leaks, man. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you the back view because it's the, uh, it's the view where the action's gonna happen if anything starts pouring out. If you see any oil, Pouring out from this side. Make sure you say something. 
I'm gonna be checking my idiot light to see if uh, it goes out. Like before, when I when I start this thing, if, if I don't see the oil light go out, immediately gonna turn off the engine. Oh, they went right out. Man, that was a quick startup. Jeez Louise. isn't working on the passenger side. So that's great. Oh yeah, it smells like gas in here for real. Let's take a look guys. stuck in my head. Tight shifting I got going on now. It's pretty great. Looks like it's already heating up faster. Holy spagolis sit right here for a second bring you guys in the cockpit and we can watch and see how long it takes to heat up yeah I gotta adjust that uh, oh yeah she's heating up already let well, it's in here and idle it's gone up a little bit it's been about five minutes so yeah it is going up faster heating up faster I'm sure if I went for a drive, it would definitely heat up faster. I'm just sitting here idling, and it is nighttime, a little cooler outside. But uh, it's working faster. I wouldn't say it's crazy fast, but uh, I'll let you know more as I test it more, guys. That's going to do it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. This is Jason from JDM Classic VW, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Easter to you. If, it's, uh, if Easter is over, then I hope you had a good Easter. See you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.